I'm Shachar Razani, and in the news, Israel's blooming relations with the United Arab Emirates. Israel's new embassy in the United Arab Emirates opened a few months after both countries announced a groundbreaking peace and normalization agreement under the auspices of the Abraham Accords. Indeed, a new era in the Middle East. What does this era look like and how does it feel? To give us a firsthand account of what this piece looks like on the ground and how we could work to fulfill the promise of a new future. I am absolutely thrilled to have with us all the way from Abu Dhabi, a very special guest, Israel's esteemed diplomat and very first ever head of Israel's mission to the United Arab Emirates, Ambassador Eitan Ae, speaking to us again all the way from Abu Dhabi. Ambassador Na'e was born in Israel. He studied Middle East history and political science at Tel Aviv University. His impressive diplomatic career included serving at Israel's Consulate General in Chicago, Ambassador to Turkey and Azerbaijan, Deputy Head of Mission for Israel in London, and a part of Israel's National Security Council as Senior Director of the Diplomatic Secretariat at the Prime Minister's Office. Na'e was appointed last December of 2020 as Israel's first head of mission at the Embassy of Israel in Abu Dhabi at the United Arab Emirates. Ambassador Na'e, it is an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you, Shafa. Thank you very um, much. Hello to everybody who is watching us now. So first of all, congratulations on being really, let's just emphasize it again, Israel's first ever head of mission uh, in the Gulf. So beyond the politics, which we'll touch later and the regular issues that you deal with as, as much as the word regular fits, how does it feel for you as an Israeli? Maybe describe this for us. It feels first, and it is historic uh, for the first time to open an embassy to go through all the all the work that needs that is needed to be done to open an embassy, starting from the very minute things of uh, finding a building, finding an office, uh, finding um, housing, uh, open a bank account, uh, first uh, local cellular phone, everything is first, and of course uh, getting to know the environment, getting to know uh, my Emirati colleagues. Going for the first time to the foreign office, to, to other government ministries, government, other government bodies, uh, making new friends. It's also a first for them in many ways. The excitement is uh, shared by both sides. Uh, going for the first time to an Emirati home, being hosted there as beautiful, as beautifully as they know how to host. Tasting the food, tasting the uh, the beautiful view that I, I can see here from uh, from the office. We are on the uh, pretty high up. Uh, the view is wonderful. It's of the uh, of the Gulf. The city is is just uh, beneath us. So um, first for everything, first Holocaust memorial, first Purim. We had a first Seder here. Uh, we celebrated Seder at the desert. Uh, on the sun, um, sitting low as as our forefathers used to all those years ago. Uh, very ecumenical state with uh, guests, Emirati guests, Christian guests, and of course uh, members of the staff. The Canadian ambassador, Jewish herself, Marcy Grossman. So everything is first. We never forget to say first time ever. Today we marked the. Uh, first Israel memorial service here in the Emirates with um, the embassy staff, um, a shared moment, and again. Before we touch on the ceremonies, which are very interesting, I have to ask you this. A lot of the work of a diplomat, especially somebody as experienced as yourself, is the interaction with the people, not just the officials, but the ordinary people out there. How was your experience, how has it been so far interacting with you know the ordinary citizenry because there are a lot of um, there is a lot of chatter about cold peace warm peace the ability of the you know our ambassador in Egypt and Cairo to interact with the people compared to how does it feel for you from the people side not just from the official side thank you for the question it's a very good question because we actually when we interact with the people and with the officials we, we feel the warmth um, uh, the interaction is almost daily uh, we are invited to people's homes. Uh, we are invited to their uh, offices. Uh, we meet them at restaurants. We meet them everywhere. Uh, you can feel the warmth. You, you feel the curiosity. People want to know us. People are happy. 
generally. Uh, I cannot speak for 10 million people that live here, but generally it is the people that we meet and interact with, curiosity, excitement, uh, a lot of questions. Uh, they do want to visit in Israel. I think it's, it's uh, comparable to the Israelis wish to visit the Emirates. Uh, they will be able to very soon. So warmth is, 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 is one word that can describe the feeling, the mutual feeling here. This is uh, truly heartwarming, especially around this time of the year. I have to ask you on the curiosity side, when you're talking about questions, what kind of questions are you getting about Israel? Is there a, do they know Israel as Israel or, or are you witnessing some misperceptions like, you know, we're being told that, you know, m people in the Arab world had been blocked from really getting to know Israel. So what kind of questions are you encountering? Exactly that. Uh, obviously, they were blocked. The Israel that they know is Israel that they saw on the Arab televisions, the Israel of the wars, the Israel of the conflict. And our job is to open, uh, open their eyes, open everybody's eyes, uh, open the Israeli eyes to the Emirates. And there are a lot of misperceptions in Israel as well. It's a very advanced country, probably one of the most advanced countries in our world and in the region. And the same when it comes to Israel, to normalize the, 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 what they think about Israel, Tel Aviv, uh, Jerusalem, everyday life, people in the street, people in restaurants, uh, what, the, what Israel really is. And, uh, it's true everywhere, and it's certainly true uh, here with the Arab world that was in many ways blocked from actually uh, getting to know the real Israel. You know, I, I just for the sake of our audience, an experienced diplomat like you, and that's a, an important statement. When you're talking about the diplomatic work, it works both ways. It's not just about even an, as an Israeli diplomat to assist uh, Emirates to understand Emiratis to understand more about Israel, but to help Israelis understand more about the UAE. And that's a very, very important point. Thank you very much for making that. Um, I want to touch on the Jewish aspect. You know, Israel is not just another country. It's the Jewish state. You were mentioning the Pesach, you know, Seder, Lela Seder. How did that go? How is your, you know, Judaism accepted um, in, in exercising the religious ceremonies like Lela Seder at the UAE? That sounds incredible. You know, in my, uh, in my career, during my career, you mentioned I was ambassador in Azerbaijan. where I saw, um, again, very openness and tolerance. And I think that the UAE is, 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 is as tolerant, as, as open uh, towards Israel, but towards Judaism. Again, a lot of curiosity, a lot of willing to learn. There are Hebrew schools that are going to open here. People are learning Hebrew. They didn't start just six months ago. They started to learn Hebrew some years ago. There are people here who speak Hebrew. Um, just two weeks ago, we sat with a group of young Emiratis, uh, bloggers, uh, or people who are very active on social media. And it was heartwarming, if not very exciting or moving, to hear what they have to say about peace, about Israel, about relations with Israel, relations with the Jewish world. Um, the ceremonies is, is one way when, when you know, it's, it's, it's nice to say it's the first time we celebrated the Seder or Yom HaShoah, but it's, when, when, it's come for, when it comes from us, that's one thing. But when the, our Emirati hosts initiate and asking, and I'm making the effort to hold a Yom HaShoah ceremony uh, in, in Dubai or, or here in Abu Dhabi, this is when you know that we have gone a very long way in a very short time. That is, um, it's really incredible. You know, when you take a moment, especially around this time from the usual politics du jour and every disagreement and the, you know, uh, uh, issues of policy and you get down to the people to people level, it's, um, I can't tell you, you know, how much I enjoy just listening to you and learning about all of that, especially when it's coming from both sides. Um, that makes a big, big difference. I know that there is, um, there is a considerable exchange of missions between Israel and uh, the UAE. A lot of people coming and going. How is that going? What's exactly happening on that route? Well, we are expecting that uh, to happen very soon. Obviously, COVID is a bit of a hindrance in, in that way, but um, with the rate of uh, vaccinations in both countries, uh, both Israel and the UAE lead the, the world in the number of uh, vaccines per population. So hopefully very soon we will open the borders to, uh, to visits, uh, trade delegations, uh, tourists. We are 
as we speak, we are working on, on, on the mutual agreements to allow that. There will be lots of uh, daily flights, weekly flights between Israel and the uh, Emirates, both the Israeli airlines and the Emirati airlines, be it uh, be the Emirates, fly Dubai, Israel Airlines, El Al, Al Kia, Israel, cargo planes. So we'll see a lot of movements. We'll see a lot of tourists, a lot of delegations uh, coming and going. There is a huge interest in both countries. We need to get some work done. We need to get the official level introduced to each other, talk to each other, uh, seeing is believing. So there is a lot that is yet uh, to happen, and our plate is is full. Well, seeing is believing indeed, and I'm sure that uh, it's visible that Israel has the right guy on the mission. I, I think there is another element here beyond the UAE's bilateral relations with Israel. Is it correct to say that the UAE is a hub, a global hub, when you talk about the connection between East and West? And how is that uh, peace between Israel and the UAE going to affect that movement, you know, the global movement? It's an excellent uh, question, Shafa. Uh, of course, the, the UAE, as I said before, is, is one of the more advanced countries in this region and is a hub, is a meeting place between the uh, East and West, uh, the huge ports, um, the uh, airliners. It's, it, it will be a hub. And, and, and I'm sure that Israelis will use the UAE as a hub, whether it is for business. Israeli companies that will come here to scale up and to... Uh, uh, penetrate uh, markets uh, through the uh, UAE and uh, their contacts in the Arab world, in the Gulf, in Africa and uh, further east, in India and other countries. So in that respect, uh, certainly the UAE is a hub. It's a hub of excellence in the, in the region. I can mention uh, quite a few things. 70% uh, of the fintech activity in the Arab world happens here in the, in the uh, UAE. Um, Seven what they do comes. 70, 70, 70% 70 of the fintech activity in the Arab world is centered here in the UAE. We've sent a probe uh, into orbit around Mars. Uh, they're going to send the first female astronaut, uh, first Arab astronaut, female astronaut um, into space. So there are a lot of exciting things that happen here that people are maybe not aware of. A very tolerant country, if, if we uh, touch upon the issue that you were uh, raised before, uh, a lot of curiosity and wish to learn about Judaism and openness, a simple openness. So in, in many ways, again, we go to uh, two key words, uh, first and warmth, curiosity, history, and uh, synergy between what we do and what the Emiratis are doing. And it's simply just about finding the right way to do it together. You know, I'm, I'm listening to you and, and what echoes to me is the word promise. There is so much promise for the future. And it's a great statement to make, not just now here, but also for all of, all of our younger viewers who are going to go to college and start across the United States and may witness the anti-Israel activity to remember that there is so much positive to expose. And this is a story untold. I am absolutely sure that the masses have no idea about the efforts that you're leading, Ambassador, in, in making this promise for a new, new future happen. And there is nothing greater than optimism and an eternal diplomatic spring that actually may serve in bringing people together. So, so thank you wholeheartedly for all of these initiatives. And please keep us posted about everything that you're doing out there so that we can assist in echoing your voice here in the United States. Thank you very much. Uh, we spoke about uh, the things that happened here and uh, you know that the Arab world uh, in the early 50s imposed uh, sanctions and boycotts on Israel. The Emiratis, of course, have lifted um, uh, the boycotts, uh, changed the laws. And uh, that is also uh, something that is important uh, to mention. As, as you said, I, I was uh, in London fighting uh, BDS uh, in the streets of London or Manchester. And when I look at it from here now, when Israeli products um, are, are, are sold here openly in the markets, when the Israelis are open uh, companies here, whether it's high tech companies, fintech companies, or, or, or uh, industrial outfits here in the, in the Emirates, truly is amazing to what was achieved in this uh, historical, visionary peace accord that was signed in Washington just seven, eight months ago. 
you know, I know it may sound as a corny expression, but the discussion between us reminds me of that. A few years ago, there was a big issue in Brooklyn at Park Slope at the co-op there, where there was a major battle between the warring parties about Israeli hummus that uh, some of the parties demanded to take it out. And of course, they, they got defeated at the end. But the fact is, I'm listening to you and it's so ridiculous because here you are for hummus Thank technology you. and satellites using it as a unifier rather than a divider. We had hummus at our seder. It's unifying Jews, Arabs, Christians, Muslims. Uh, we are concentrating here on what, uh, in what uh, bring, brings us together, what unifies us, uh, communalities. And there is a lot of work to be done, but a lot has been achieved in such a short time. Very good. Uh, very good. Um, there are those, Ambassador Nae, who claim that Israel has always had relations in the Gulf and the current developments really didn't change much. So maybe you can share with us what kind of relations did Israel have in the past and how is this situation different? Can you see the flag behind me? Looking that very good. It's waving proudly. Uh, we are here out in the open. We just opened, I'm sitting here at offices that were opened uh, less than a week ago, not yet even, uh, you know, uh, officially open, but we are sitting in an Israeli embassy with, a, with a, a plate outside saying openly the Israeli embassy in Abu Dhabi. So we are here as official Israel. There's a lot of work that has been done before, you're right. There's a lot of work that is being done now, led by the foreign office, uh, both in Jerusalem and us here. Uh, leading, um, pushing forward. The two foreign officers are uh, really uh, pushing it together, uh, working as one, the Emirati ambassador in Israel, uh, Muhammad Mahmoud Ali al a colleague and a friend, and us here, uh, the team here, and uh, the consul general in his team in, in Dubai. So, Again, when it comes to official agreements that are being signed, uh, drafts that are being exchanged just before this uh, interview, I send a few more draft agreements to the Foreign Office here to be signed. Uh, communications, health, environment, uh, that, has, that work is unprecedented. Yes, there was a, a second presence here via third countries. It's now direct. We used to meet Emiratis in Europe or in the US. We meet them here now. We don't know. We, we don't need to go anywhere, but rather come here to Dubai or Abu Dhabi. So there was a presence, but the presence now is official. It's open. It's led by this embassy and the consul general in Dubai. And as I said, for the first time, Israeli flag is waving proudly here in Abu Dhabi and in Dubai. It's um. You know, it makes me think about before we may have narrow casted the normalization and the inner dealings of interested parties. And now you sit there with the flag and the banner and the sign and you're broadcasting peace to the region, giving the kosher certificate to anybody who is interested in engaging. And there is another interesting element you mentioned, Mr. Ambassador, and that is about the role played in, in at the UAE and in the region. Now Israel doesn't have to resort to hosting conferences in Vienna, Stockholm, or Oslo, we can meet right there, whether it's Ramallah or whether it's in the Gulf, to collaborate in the region. And that is in and of itself a significant improvement, isn't it? It is. And I'm sure that other countries and um, other people uh, across and around the region, from Mauritania and Morocco in the West to Pakistan in the East and beyond, uh, are watching us. Um, I hope that we are building a successful model that will serve other countries when they come to uh, establish uh, full, normal, peaceful relationships with Israel, uh, understanding and seeing in their own eyes the fruits of peace, the, the benefits of, of, of living um, you know, in coexistence. We don't have to agree on anything. There sure are enough issues we don't agree with, we don't see eye to eye with, but it shouldn't stop us to cooperate on the issues we do agree with and we, don't, and we do want to promote and see progress. We're doing it for our own people. We're doing it for food security. We do it for uh, advancement of science and um, for the better of our peoples. And I think that that's the way forward. And hopefully this will be followed by other countries 
signing piece as our foreign minister, Gabi Ashkenazi said, the club is open to others, for others to join. Amazing. Um, you know, it's, it's, Ambassador Na'e, you are taking a historical journey. I know you as an experienced diplomat, you really dive down to the details and, you know, you hit the ground running. But at the end of the day, if you pause for a second and you just take a look at what you're doing as the first ever Israeli head of mission at the UAE and the moves you're making, it's truly a historical journey. A new Middle East that we could only dream of only a few decades ago is now manifesting before our eyes. So my question to you is, and it's very interesting, what is on the top of your agenda? Agenda as you embark? What do you wish to promote, let's say, as agenda item one and two? What do you want to see happening uh, under your reign as ambassador? I would like to see the uh, legal groundwork being laid when it comes to agreements signed between the countries that allow us to further our um, relationships, bilateral relationships. I would like to see commerce, investments, uh, trade uh, moving forward. I'm coming back. Uh, I just came back to the embassy from a, from a very fruitful meeting with one of the investment funds. We are discussing ways to increase cooperation when it comes to joint research and development, investments. Um, Israeli companies daily coming here, uh, their daily visits. Um, and this is, I think, one of the top um, items on, on my agenda here and on the agenda of the Emirati ambassador in, uh, in Israel to uh, really promote trade relationships, bilateral relationships, and of course, and, and we mentioned it before, people to people's relationships. I think this is the most important thing, penetrate into the hearts, into the minds, to break those uh, stereotypes, to normalize the picture, what they imagine Israel is, uh, using all media, whether it's TV, whether it's radio, whether it's the social media, whatever works. And I think these are the two most important things because we want these relationships to last. You know, Ambassador, Ambassador Na'e, I'm listening to you and I have to tell you, from the outside, it seems like it's making perfect sense. Um, Israeli know-how and technology and advance, the, the United Emirates desire to transition from oil economy into the new world and sustain themselves for the future. It feels natural. Does it feel natural to you as well on doing the work on the ground? It doesn't just feel natural, but when coming here and seeing the huge work that was done here, um, it also humbles us because there's a lot of work that was done here. There's a lot of technology that was developed here. And we Israelis can learn a lot from what was done here. Uh, the level of development, uh, construction, in research, in, in, in the way women play such a major role in, the, in all fields of government and the economy. To look to listen and also to learn. And, and hence the, the, the synergy. Uh, I met men and women. The space program here is, 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 is staffed, 80% of the staff are women. Uh, the space agency is headed by an incredible and, and, and uh, very impressive woman. So is uh, you know the expo uh, here and then other uh, government uh, offices. So I meet really people from all walks of life, when men, women. The United Arab Emirates is, 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 uh, is an impressive country and it's really an honor and a pleasure uh, to work here. Uh, Ambassador, you mentioned the first and you alluded to it earlier about the, you know, the first ever Holocaust remembrance ceremony a few months ago for the International Holocaust Commemoration in Arabic, which you took uh, part in, and I had the pleasure of attending the Memorial Day for Fallen Soldiers and Victims of Terror, the Israel's Independence Day in the UAE. What are you doing uh, during those occasions? How did it feel to actually lead those uh, memorial ceremonies where you are? And what had been the reactions from the locals? For instance, when it comes to the Holocaust, are they aware or is there ignorance when it comes to Israel's fallen soldiers? What's the feeling vis-a-vis -vis that issue? And of course, Israel's Independence Day. Please share with us a little bit of your experience in this regard. It's interesting. Uh, the Holocaust Memorial was led, initiated and held by the Emiratis. The recent one, the Israeli one, that was uh, just held last week. And in that respect, it is, it is very moving. It's not us who held it and invited guests. It's, it's the Emiratis inviting us, us to an event that they have, um, uh, that they created. 
in the Museum of Civilizations in, uh, in Dubai. Um, the Memorial Day and the Independence Day uh, uh, services are, are held in, uh, here in Abu Dhabi under the corona restrictions on a very small scale uh, by the embassy and embassy staff. We had a very short cere uh, ceremony here today and uh, we'll have uh, a small event here amongst, uh, amongst ourselves. Um, but it is very moving. Uh, we stand here uh, in silence for, for, for two minutes when we hear the siren. And the view outside is, 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 is Abu Dhabi. Uh, so it's very hard for me to translate into, into words, but for people just to imagine the, 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 the level of emotions that, and, and, and thoughts that go through us. Our friends, us, our fathers fought, died, sacrificed their lives, not just in protection of our, of our homeland, but in order also to arrive to these moments. Ambassador Naeh, um, I think uh, all of us, the state of Israel and the Jewish people and community are very lucky to have you um, leading Israel's work at the United Arab Emirates. And I'd like to thank you for your truly incredible and wonderful voice of optimism and for all of the work you do for Israel and peace, not just now at the UAE, but across the world. Um, I, I just want to conclude our conversation with alluding to something you said. Um, you were mentioning not just about teaching, but also about learning. And that element of humility is truly a fundamental one in the diplomatic work. And I thank you for emphasizing it also for our viewers who seek many a time to find new ways to interact with their immediate surroundings when it comes to Israel. And here we are listening to you to understand what is the essence of, you know, the quintessential diplomat. So thank you for that. You're most welcome. I think it is important that when we come here to the UAE to understand that we also have lots to learn from what they're doing and how they've done it. It's quite impressive. We are two countries emerge from desert, fighting the elements. I think that the Emiratis fought uh, tougher elements. It's way hotter here, uh, way more arid, dry, um, and uh, it, it's a real desert. And what they've done here in 50 years of independence is pretty amazing. We should all uh, look at it. There is way, uh, there's much work to do here. There's much work to do in Israel, but we hope to do it together in the future as well. Amen. Thank you very much, Ambassador Nae. <clears throat> and to all of our few viewers, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay healthy. And most importantly, after this conversation with the ambassador, stay optimistic. I'd like to thank our director, Sloan Copeland, JBS's managing director, Dara Golub, our technical manager, Michael Paley, transmission manager, John McDevitt, and to our wonderful producer of In the News, Carol Lilienthal. For JBS, I'm Shahar Azani. Until next time, see you soon. Shalom and lehitraot.